Hello and welcome, I'm Maria Ressa. We took a short break and we are back. This time we talked to the spokesman of Vice President of UNA and Vice President Judge Marbina Mon Ilagan Mon. It's good to have you here in Rappler. Hi Ressa, good afternoon. And, uh, this is my first time here. I like the setup. Oh, thank you. We're uh, magulo, no? no? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so tell me, it is a day before Election Day. What's going through your mind? Oh, well, um, we pray a lot. I think uh, man disposes, God, uh, uh, man uh, proposes, God disposes. No? Uh, we're still confident, the team Binay and uh, the vice president still confident that he's going to win the elections tomorrow. In fact, that was uh, a part of his uh, speech just uh, yes, really. last night on yeah. the meeting the Abanse. Um, he said uh, he's going to win about four or five million uh, margins against uh, the other presidential bonds, no, and um, he said that based on his experience because uh, this can be a repetition of the 2010 elections. Yes, uh, where he won about 700,000 700, uh, votes against uh, Secretary Mario Rojas, no, and um, what he did was really a, a full campaign from day one. Uh, he, he really did not stop. He wants to visit Barangay, the Sichos, and he's really a man on the streets and he wants to a uh, face-to-face uh, campaign with his constituents to explain his platform of government under the BNI presidency. How would you describe these campaigns, these particular elections? So you mentioned that uh, that he, he is looking at it like 2010, but 2016 is a very different ball game, right? It's a very different election. So how would you describe this? What makes it different? How has it impacted mm -hmm. your campaigns? Well, first of all, there were so many issues, you know, race against the vice president. It started um, when he uh, mentioned that um, after winning in 2010, that he plans um, to run for the presidency. Then um, the opposition, uh, the other interested parties, you know, uh, already began to think something else of ah, kailangan pababa natin ng survey ni vice president. So, and then it started with the Senate investigation, yes. and um, there was no new characters actually um, in that investigation. Um, his uh, former opponents, um, polit political opponents in Makati, were the same people who were the witnesses, no, uh, during yes. the Senate investigation. And um, the um, the old issues were revived, no, right. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the, the the vice president, his family felt that it's all politics, no. Uh, if you really have this um, evidences, then file it in court. I will face it in court, no. It's not a matter of Senate investigation. Um, it's not a matter of um, you know um, getting all the um, government agencies to really track down uh, the vice president and his family in order to for his um, service to be affected no? and it happened that was the, the very difficult part of uh, the experience uh, of the vice president so um, his ratings and service was affected ratings and surveys the strategy of not addressing it head on do you think looking back that was the right thing to do mm -hmm. because he was not um, given a chance really you know uh, one is that he did not appear in the senate because um, he respect the senate as an institution yes he respect the senators and most of all he has this um, high respect also um, in the office of the vice president uh, what he did was uh, he had this uh, a, a statement yes. submitted to the Senate. Right, right, you know? right. Okay. So um, he, he, he felt that it was a grandiose plan eh, by the opposition um, to really hit the vice president and then make several issues. So and you affected, uh -oh. affected, yeah. But uh, of course, he has to answer all of this. No? Right. But in the right time, in the right place, which is he believes in court.
Okay, okay. Well, I, I want to show you the performance of the statistical surveys over time. Can we just put up the presidential surveys again? The poll monitor, which puts together SWS, Lilo, and Pulse mm -hmm. Asia. This has been the impact. If you look, this would have been in 2014, in April of 2014. Right. The blue line is Vice President Binai, and he was at a whopping 40%. Right. And I guess over time, we saw this, this, this gradual decline, and then a decline further on. Um, now, according to Ronnie Holmes, who was just here, that decline doesn't mean he doesn't have a shot. Mm -hmm. at winning tomorrow, mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. a significant decline. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would have done differently that could have helped prevent that? Um, well, um, the Vice President has really prepared for that, the separate issues. No? And uh, of course, um, th the way that uh, he explained it to people, no? one thing is that parang, um, he loses his chance uh, from the media to really get his side. Um, what he did was really to go straight to the people. Uh, he's also techniques yes. you know, um, in, in his campaign. Yes. Um, I think he's the most troubled uh, presidential candidate. You know? uh, just last month, I read it. He has, he has visited and campaigned for 71 provinces. You know? And there are still barangays and sitios, etc. So he wants to explain to people the issues, the allegations of corruption against mm -hmm. him and his mm -hmm. family. And with that, kakaroon siya ng ano, mag-aang yung, yung feeling niya, yung trabaho niya, na naiintindihin siya ng tao, especially in the province. No? Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, uh, this is really what he did. No? Yeah. And with, 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 with that, well, sabi nga ni, ni Mr. Holmes kanina, it's about 25%. Yes. Right. No, um, still, I would say at this point and until tomorrow, it's still a very tight race yes. among the, the, the presidential boss. No? But and that yeah. actually is something that earlier on, we because it was so dramatic, mm -hmm. we didn't realize. But Ronnie Holmes was interest, I, I, interesting in his statements when he showed us the data. Mm -hmm. He's 75% will stick are very certain of their votes, but he said mm -hmm. that 25%, which is roughly 12 million votes, right, uh, can swing. Yes. Uh, and I think that's what you're seeing right, in, right, in uh, your campaign. So what do you plan to do to make sure that, that you can get the votes tomorrow? Um, the Vice President has always maintained, you know, and then is really um, um, confident that uh, we can still get the majority of the votes, even though a minority president, majority, majority president, it doesn't matter, as long as he wins in the election. Um, his core votes, you know, his core groups, you know, uh, the organizations, um, his organizations, the parallel groups are still intact. Mm. And um, right now, we still believe that um, it's no longer a popularity issue. It's no longer a one-liner uh, statement. You know, but uh, it's now, um, um, it started with the groundworks. You know, yung labanan sa baba. And we still believe that, and we can still feel that the vice president is very confident that our organization, the UNA, UNA team, and the team BNI, the core group and his organizations are still intact and will still remain, uh, be, be of supportive to the vice president tomorrow. Um, what exactly does, the, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of the core team and the groundwork? Right. What, what, mm -hmm. what can you explain more? Well, about that? these are the people who can really understand the vice president. Yes. And of course, the allegations against him. And these are the very core people. Like, for example, in Makati. Yes. There were so many constituents of uh, Jojo Bina in Makati um, who really benefited from the local government of Makati. Those, uh, for example, um, 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 what's this? Um, receive the free education, okay? So those who are poor, free health services, free medicines. Yes. Those who, whose families who were provided jobs, the OFWs, you no? Know, these are the very people who are really the trumpet blowers uh, of the vice president. That's why we keep saying the issue now, the main issue now is poverty. It's still kahirapan. Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, the real issue is poverty, if it's kahirapan, then we need somebody who's really competent in that. 
who has the executive ability, who has the experience, and who has a compassionate heart for the poor, who can really understand the problem of the Philippines. It's not bullets, no? Yes. Uh, um, it's not uh, harassment, but it's bigas. We call it bigas, the rice, trabajo, no? And uh, of course, the compassionate heart for the poor. And, and that's the, that is the style, and that is the vice president. We notice, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but the vice president hasn't focused much on social media. Has your mm -hmm. campaign focused much on that, or? Yeah, we we do we do have uh, no, we do have a, a, a group of uh, social media, no. But uh, I think there are more long, there are more um, uh, how do you call that trollers, trollers, and how do you Meron, meron lamang for social media, pero maybe I would say at this point, hindi ganun ka dami, ng katulad ng, um, like for example, with Digong Duterte and Marojas, eh. when yes. you say something, Correct. oh, they right. will mob you, they right. will attack right. you, something like Actually, that. Actually, <laughs> Mon, it was interesting, you know, when we decided to carry the live, the, the launch of the vice president's campaign we mm -hmm. carried a live stream mm -hmm. and we were attacked for carrying a live stream that bayarando <laughs> kami because uh -huh. we did that and mm -hmm. and what that was the first time i really noticed that you guys aren't very focused on social media so do you see do you not see social media as an, as a potent tool at all of course unlike mar and uh, of and course it's very important though, especially uh, nowadays um if you do not know how to you know um uh, operate your computer and uh, you, you, you do not have a Facebook or a Twitter, maiiwan ka. So, um, um, we have a group who's mm -hmm. taking care mm -hmm. of that. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe that um, we can already, the, the Vice President and the Team B9 can explain our sides, mm -hmm. our issues mm -hmm. through, through the social media. But the most important thing to you is on the ground. I mean, yes. is that um, one of those one of those one of, okay. so so again going over your entire campaign what mm -hmm. is anything stand out about the 2016 elections what what is team b and i doing differently than what it did in 2010 mm -hmm. first of all we need to believe the team b and i know um, what is important for us teamwork mm -hmm. um, everybody is a team player and uh, we always um, we always uh, believe that we have a strong product that we have a strong uh, vice president who will be the next president of the Republic of the Philippines. That is the most experienced, that he has this executive ability, and that he can understand the issue amongst us. No? And I, I, I think we believe that this is the strength, though, aside from the programs of the vice president, aside from uh, his core groups, aside from his organization, and aside from, um, of course, uh, the, the uh, the composition of professional people, the core people of the vice president. So uh, we believe that uh, that it, uh, gives us the strength, the, the, the totality of the organization. Um, we did see that, mm. that the vice president took a hit over time because of these charges of corruption and there's a pending case mm -hmm. now I mean mm -hmm. it, essentially is it fair to say the vice president is is fighting for uh, his life because right. as mm -hmm. if he is he does not win his immunity goes right. away right right uh -huh. well um, first of all Jojo Bina is a lawyer he's a human rights lawyer so he knows how to, how to answer that and uh, I think as a lawyer he has long been prepared for that you know? and um, um, even though I would say that is a, a speculative or a speculative question, mm -hmm. um, well, he's preparing for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the vice president no, is also waiting for that, that he will be given his day in court, no, and in, in, in not through uh, we, we, we call the impar impartial investigation uh, conducted by the Senate and the other agencies, and that he would be given really a fair chance uh, before the court, if that really happens, but uh, the, the vice president is still really confident, no, uh, still really confident that he's going to win in this election. So, medyo far fetched pa rin yan. hindi niya pa rin iniisip yan. But he has to prepare for that. Of course. Sabi niya, ikaw nga masyado kong nervous to talaga magulang. <laughs> <laughs> nervous. So, sabi ko lang sa kanya, I'm just telling him that um, kailangan handa sa lahat ng pagkakataon. Of course. All right. The voters today. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 49% are between the ages of 18 and 34 years old. It's a younger generation. Yes, 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 um, um, 
how would you describe what they're looking for and how does this, how does Vice President Bina, how does Team Bina fulfill that? Mm -hmm. If not directly the Vice President, of course the Team Bina does that. So we have a, a composition of um, the Senators made up of Manny Pacquiao. Oh, and pag sinabi mong Manny Pacquiao dyan, then uh, the youth group, ano, yes, uh, yes. Know, no? uh, especially those who are really get involved with the sports. No? Yes. Uh, I, I, I think Manny, si Manny Pacquiao has a command vote. No? And then I, I, I was telling him, we had a short chat, you know, if you go together with the vice president during the campaign, then it will definitely help him a lot because you have a command vote. And so with the vice president, if you put that together, you, know, mm -hmm. you will really put, put up its other. You know? Itataas nyo talaga yung bawat isa. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Manny thought of that and after the game, so uh, he, his decision was really to join the vice president in his remaining days for the campaign. I think that is one, that, that is one particular issue that can really help no? uh, boost uh, mm -hmm the, uh, of course, the support for the vice president. Um, in terms of, uh, of where we are today, what they're looking for, we've, in Rappler, we've actually just categorized it as mm -hmm. a choice between change and continuity. Mm -hmm. And we've actually categorized uh, the vice president, Jojo Binai, right. in continuity mm -hmm. to a degree because he's mm -hmm. been in office for so long. Right. Right. And yet there's this great clamor for change. I guess the, how, how mm -hmm. is Jojo Binai mm -hmm. changing mm -hmm. with the times? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Jojo Binai became the local chief executive of Makati for the last 21 years, and then he became the vice president for six years. And then as a local chief executive, he still believes in predictability, he mm -hmm. still believes in continuity, especially in the local mm -hmm. government. No? Uh, sabi nga niya, itapon mo pagka hindi maganda. But uh, if this administration, if the Akinian ad administration um, really may pinakita siyang maganda, then we will continue it. We'll just follow it. We'll just mm -hmm. respect it. But if it's not maganda, then we'll change it. No? Mm -hmm. So um, that is where uh, he wants to be also. That is where he, um, his vision no? uh, would come in. And uh, the vice president also wants to have a unifying, no? a unifying and a healing yes. uh, presidency or administration. Let's forget all of this. And we work together. We sit down. We plan. And um, at least in order for everybody to move to, to move on and mm -hmm. then help our fellow Filipinos, especially those who are suffering. So this is the vision of the Vice President. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by the rise of Duterte? Uh, just like uh, Grace Bo, uh, Mayor Duterte was, I have uh, high respect also, no? but I do not know him personally. But I will still believe that he's just a media creation, just like Grace Bo, no? Mayor Duterte has been mayor of Davao for 21 years and um, well, he made Davao very peaceful but I would say it, it is not really, uh, how, how would you say it, hindi siya kapantay ng development like what Jojo Binay did in Makati. Yes. When he started in Makati, he started with 250 million pesos and then after his term, the budget of Makati went up to about 11 billion pesos. You know? And then you can you cannot easily do that. You cannot easily uh, get the trust of your taxpayers in Makati. So you really have to prove a lot. You really have to show your sincerity by being transparent. No, we have to really show your vision. And, and um, true enough, Jojo Bina made Makati the financial district. So I, I think that, that that is the the difference. I would say that there is no comparison between Makati and Davao. Now, um, why is uh, ako, I, I also ask my, myself, uh, Risa, no? uh, bakit ganito si taas ang rating ni, ni Digong? When I heard him and when I watched him during the last debate, I think naman, with modesty aside, the Vice President has really that, um, really that very particular and specific programs for the poor, no? uh, for the economy, for agriculture. Digong, uh, walang notes, you know, and then parang nangungopya na lang ng sagot sa mga bawat presidente, no? But, it's really sikat, no? Um, uh, I don't know. Kaya, um, we, we, once we were asked, I do not believe anymore in surveys because it's really different 
what's happening and what we have experienced on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, numbers are numbers. Yeah. These are surveys, and it tells us the direction yes. of the yes. wind blows, so where the wind blows. But for me, the vice president in the UNA believe that uh, the real survey is the result of the election. Monday. Monday. Yes. Yeah. But I guess you don't see that there was something in that erosion over time. It's these the corruption mm. charges, yes, right? Yes, yes. I mean, you can actually say how much it costs to have the toilets in Makati. Um, I suppose there was so much that was there and they weren't effectively countered. Mm -hmm. At least that's the that's, uh, mm -hmm. perception of many people, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there something that can be that you would have done differently had you known this? Or is it, do you think, I, I'm, I'm scrambling here because I guess what I'm trying to say is, did you do the right thing? Or did you leave him vulnerable? Was he vulnerable I by not speaking? I believe so. Uh, I think the vice president and Mayor Junjun and his family did well and explained everything. They surrendered everything. In fact, during the last debate, the second debate, no, uh, they were forcing the other network. They were forcing that uh, he brought uh, so many notes. Yes. But it's not notes, but it's documents. No, mm. um, one is that the vice president wants the Filipino people to finish all these allegations. Many were asking questions. Bakit hindi mo sinasagot? directly you issue the allegations Correct. of corruption right, against right, you. Right, right, right. And the vice president believes during the second uh, debate in Cebu, he wanted to show the public documents, his mm -hmm. sal and, you know, his properties, etc., but he was not allowed. Then he did it again. He mm -hmm. did it again uh, during the third debate. Right. Uh, he brought the voluminous uh, documents, you know. He showed it to media. Mm -hmm. And he even challenged the other presidential boards to sign a waiver for AMLC to open the bank documents. Nobody responded. So I, I don't think there is no um, new ways anymore um, um, to really show his honesty. And ito na eh, nilabas ko ng lahat eh. Yes. What else? What else to prove? So you're saying during the campaign you saw support for uh, the vice president, for Giorgio Binay, and mm -hmm. that support hasn't translated to these surveys. Um, uh, Ronnie Holmes actually said that 25% that is soft. I guess explain mm -hmm. to me now how mm -hmm. you see the win happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, we still believe that the vice president still remains, uh, the support for vice president remains intact in Pangasinan and uh, Lingayen, um, Lingayen Corridor. And uh, this is, excuse me, this is a, um, a um, repetition of what's going to happen, uh, or what happened in, in 2010. 2010 no? uh, we're in, um, of course, in Pangasinan, uh, there were so many local candidates who really uh, just, uh, we call it the silent majority, who support the vice president in Isabela, Region 2. No, he won also in Bulacan, no, and uh, some parts of, uh, of course, Quezon uh, with the with the Congressman Danny, no, Danny Suarez, and of course his son, no, uh, JJ Suarez. I think uh, he will have a solid vote as far as Quezon uh, mm -hmm. is concerned. And uh, in Laguna, there is ER running for governor, no. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're still confident. We're still confident that uh, the, the vice president has the number. And he was happy yesterday. And uh, he's just waiting for uh, the results despite of you know, the reports in the survey. So we believe that we are very strong. We have a strong core group. We have a strong organization on the ground. The last question is about uh, pulling up later on in a few years from now. What do you think the 2016 elections will be remembered for? It will be remembered for one, uh, the Filipino people uh, really, uh, it took them really, it took them, uh, how do you call it, a long time to decide. Meaning, the decision is really malapit, napakalapit. And it's really a very tight race. Yes. In the previous elections, you get 10, 15 percent ahead. Yes. The election is over. Now, I would still say a day before the election, still. It's a very tight race, and mm -hmm. we still believe that the UNA team and vice presidents are mm -hmm. going to win in this race. Um, the other one is that this is the only time we're in 
the president is calling for unity at this point in time it should be done it should be uh, i think that uh, panawagan by, by President Aquino should be done maybe after the second debate or after the first debate. Mm -hmm. Why only now? Mm -hmm. And the Vice President said uh, maybe it's not it's not really a, a unity, no? a call for unity but really a call for Comelec, a call for uh, President Aquino uh, to make this election a better legacy, a legacy of uh, President Aquino um, for a uh, honest, orderly, peaceful, and of course, credible elections. And uh, we, we, we think that this would be a very good legacy um, and not uh, to avoid cheating, intimidation, of course, um, and especially in, in, uh, in the remote areas. We just hope that we will have a peaceful and credible elections for 2016. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we've been speaking with Juan Elangan. He's the spokesman for Vice President Giorgio Binay. Up next, we'll take a short, short break and leave you with something to watch. But up next is Grace Poe spokesman, Rex Gachalian. Let's watch these reports and see you soon. Thank you.